depending upon the conductivity that is the conduction of electricity as well as heat we can classify solids into three number one the metals number two the insulators and number three the semiconductors now the question must arise that how we can differ these materials depending upon their conductivities and the answer is as simple as that depending upon the band theory or the energy band diagram we can classify solids into metals insulators as well as semiconductors as we know that every metal is a good conductor of both electricity as well as heat and they can readily conduct both of these but in an insulator the conductivity is very very poor in some books you can find that they are, have been written that the insulators are zero conductivity but that is totally wrong we can prove that an insulator has also some certain level of conductivity but yes this is very very small compared to that of a metal as well as a semiconductor and a semiconductor the conductivity of a semiconductor lies in between metals and insulators and that's why semiconductors are so much important in today's electronics now before discussing the mechanism of current conduction in a solid we must appreciate that there must be some vacant energy states for electrons to move about freely if an externally electric field is applied now as we know that in a diamond structure or in a diamond crystal the valence band is completely filled with electrons and the conduction band is totally empty as well as for a semiconductor at zero kelvin we can find that there are also some vacant states in the conduction band as there will be no electrons in the conduction band at zero kelvin and the valence band is totally filled with electrons then where is the difference between a semiconductor and an insulator as we can see in the energy band diagrams that the energy gap for an insulator that is specially for the diamond structure there is a huge difference between the conduction band and the valence band but for semiconductors the difference the energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band is not so wide so there may be some chances that by heating or some another procedure we can uplift the electrons from the valence band to the empty conduction band in a semiconductor and that is the reason behind the conductivity of a semiconductor but what is the case for a metal so let's look at the energy band diagram of metals insulators and semiconductors right now so let's look at this picture carefully i have shown you firstly an insulator then a semiconductor and lastly a metal so you can find that the energy band diagram of an insulator and a semiconductor looks like similar as you can see that for a typical that is for a diamond structure the energy gap between the empty conduction band and the field valence band is about 5 electron volts while that for a semiconductor it is around 1.1 electron volt so there is the difference that is the energy gap between the conduction band and the valence band of an insulator is quite a large compared to that of a semiconductor so the energy which is required to uplift an electron from this field energy state that is the valence band to the empty conduction band for an insulator is quite large compared to that of a semiconductor now let's look at the case of a metal in metal there is a chance that the conduction band and the valence band is overlapping each other so you can't recognize that where the conduction band ends and where from the valence band starts so the electrons which is actually resides inside the valence band they 
can behave as the conduction band electrons okay and alternatively in some metals there may be the valence band is filled up with electrons but the conduction band is partially filled so if the electron can have some empty states in the conduction band they can easily conduct electricity as well as heat so that is the reason that a metal can react or can conduct electricity as well as heat readily but we are interested upon the semiconductor materials and as you can see and i have repeatedly told you that the number of electrons residing in the conduction band actually take part in the conductivity of the material so for a semiconductor as the energy gap that is the gap between the valence band that is the field valence band and the empty conduction band is around 1 1.1 electron volt so there may be some chances that is due to the room temperature that is the thermal agitation we can uplift an electron from this field energy state that is from the valence band to the empty conduction band and as a result we can find conductivity in a semiconductor so the bottom line is here that is at zero kelvin semiconductor can behave as an insulator why because at zero kelvin there will be no energy that will push the electrons from the valence band to the conduction band as a result the semiconductors behave like an insulator but at a room temperature that is the amount of energy which is required to uplift an electron from the valence band to the empty conduction band so at room temperature semiconductors behave like conductors that is the main essence of semiconductors now let's move on to discuss what is a direct semiconductor and an indirect semiconductor